Let's face it, unless you're passionate about electrical engineering or you're deep into overclocking, you probably don't think much about this component, but you should. If you still don't care about power supplies and you just want my recommendation on what a good power supply is, go ahead and skip to the end of the video where I talk about that. Otherwise, let's dive in. Power supply units or PSUs are crucial for your PC to get the power it needs to operate smoothly. While low quality power supplies may be cheaper, they fail at a higher rate. When power supplies fail, they could potentially destroy every other power component in your build. But how do you know what a high quality power supply is? Is it just buy the expensive one and avoid the cheap ones? Well, not necessarily, and that might be surprising to you. To even begin looking for a power supply, you first need to know roughly how many watts the system you're building will use. This is easy and can be done through several tools, one of which is PCPartPicker.com. If you put all your parts into this website, it's gonna give you an estimated wattage that the build is gonna require. Once you have that, you have your first puzzle piece. Power supply wattage can be a fairly controversial subject and people often say you need a much larger wattage power supply than you actually do. For instance, my PC runs an Asus ROG Z790 Extreme motherboard with an Intel Core i9-13900K. I have no power limits on the CPU and an NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition. I have two D5 pumps, 15 fans, all with RGB, two M.2 drives, and one old school 7200 RPM hard drive. I use a 1200 watt power supply and it's plenty. Even if I'm overclocking and the system is working hard, I may see close to or just over a thousand watts usage. A lot of people would have told me to get a 1600 watt power supply and that's just not necessary. So with that in mind, once you have your wattage estimation, it's gonna help you narrow down your power supply selection. After determining the wattage, the next step is to decide what standard of power supply you wanna buy. The latest standard is ATX 3.1. This standard ensures that power supplies meet specific criteria to be compliant. One of the main features of ATX3 power supplies is their ability to deliver 600 watts on a single 12 volt high power cable. This is why you need to have four 8 pin PCI cables pigtailed to a single 12 volt high power cable on older power supplies. The previous ATX power supply standard had 8 pin PCI cables delivering 150 watts per cable. Now purchasing the latest standard is not necessary to operate the latest generation of parts but there are benefits. There's gonna be fewer cables that you need to manage and the tighter power delivery tolerances with ATX3 can improve your system's performance, especially when it comes to overclocking. The last decision to make before starting to look for a power supply is what efficiency rating you want. You've probably seen those stickers that say 80 plus gold, but what exactly does it mean and what should you buy? This rating is an efficiency rating, which indicates how much power loss occurs during the conversion of input power from your home to output power for your PC. In simple terms, an 80 plus power supply converts at least 80% of the input power and loses 20% to heat. Each rating in the 80 plus certification has a different percentage of efficiency. The chart that's on the screen now shows the minimum efficiencies at specific loads that need to be met to meet a specific 80 plus certification. Some things to consider when you're choosing an efficiency rating is gonna be electric costs. If your local electricity costs are high, you might wanna consider going with a higher efficiency rating to reduce power consumption and save money over time. You'll also wanna consider the temperature of the room that your PC is gonna be in. A little weird, but hear me out. If your room tends to be on the hotter side, a higher efficiency power supply is gonna perform better since it converts power at a higher rate, even at higher temperatures. So again, you'll save more money over time. And the last thing to consider when picking an efficiency rating is gonna be your budget. A higher efficiency power supply tends to be more expensive. So if you have a lower budget, consider a power supply on the lower end of the certification scale. Keep in mind that ATX3 certified power supplies only need to be 60% efficient with a 10 watt load. So just because a power supply meets ATX standards, does not mean it also meets 80 plus certification. It is a separate and additional voluntary certification that power supply brands and manufacturers can choose to undertake. 
Personally, I prefer 80 plus gold power supplies because they strike a good balance between cost, efficiency, and quality components and they offer a much wider selection of power supplies to choose from. Now that you have those things picked out, you can finally start to actually look for a power supply. And this is where the next set of considerations start. You'll want to look for power supplies that advertise 105 degrees Celsius Japanese capacitors, as these are the best capacitors on the market for manufacturers to use in their power supplies. Power supplies that have these will be sure to mention it in their product page. It's a great selling point, so it shouldn't be too hard to find that in the information area. In addition to the highest quality capacitors, look for a list of protections the power supply has built in. The protections should include over power protection or OPP, over voltage protection or OVP, under voltage protection or UVP, short circuit protection or SCP, over current protection or OCP, and over temperature protection or OTP. These protection features should be listed in the power supply's description so make sure you check for those and ensure that you get a power supply with those protections. These features are crucial to maintaining the safety and reliability of your PC during its operation. The next thing to look for while searching is whether you want a modular power supply. Power supplies can have no modularity, which means all of the cables are permanently attached and there is no option to add more cables for different power options. And these are usually gonna be your cheapest options. Fully modular power supplies, on the other hand, have no cables that are permanently attached. And you can even buy custom cables to use with your build. These are gonna be in your more expensive power supplies, but give you the most freedom. If you want something in the middle, you can get a semi-modular power supply, which has some cables that are permanently attached, most likely the 24 pin motherboard power and the CPU power cables, while also maintaining some modularity in the form of PCI Express cables or a 12 volt high power or something like that. Gives you a little bit of flexibility while being kind of in the center of the price points. Final consideration when choosing a power supply is its physical size. The physical size of the power supply is crucial because it must fit within your PC case. Make sure to check your case specifications to determine the maximum size of the power supply it can accommodate. Then compare these measurements with those provided in the power supplies information page to ensure a proper fit. So now that you're armed with all of that information, you can pick a great power supply that fits in your budget, is safe for your system, and gives you peace of mind. But if you still don't know what to pick, I personally have found a lot of success with Seasonic power supplies. I've been running a Seasonic PSU in my build for over a year now with no issues. They're my go-to for new builds. I recommend the Focus GX series for budget builds and the Vertex GX otherwise. They are both ATX fully modular power supplies with cables included. They have Japanese 100 five degrees celsius capacitors and they come in various wattage amounts they really cover all the bases for almost all builds and the power supplies have reviewed extremely well for exceptional power delivery and build quality as a disclaimer seasonic is not a sponsor of the channel and i purchased my vertex gx 1200 with my own money if you're interested in these power supplies check the links in the description and if you do use the links, it's going to help out my channel a lot. And please don't forget to subscribe as well. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And thank you for watching. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.